Well, hey there, idiots. Welcome back to Observe. In today's video, we're going to be analyzing the nonverbal communication of Shane and Ryan from Watcher as they go and explore some various haunted locations. More on that in just a second. Let's go ahead and roll the intro first. Okay, so as voted upon by you, the video that I'm going to be analyzing today is their video on the death tunnel from Waverly Hills. I'm down and open to doing more of these videos, so if there are other requests that you have, please let me know. Also, if you are new here and you want to be able to support the channel in a little bit of a, a, a further way than just subscribing, please consider becoming a member. I have made those available for everybody to select from. There's only one tier. You do get some fun emojis and badges, so... Go and check that out, especially if you would like to support the channel just a little bit extra. I think that's enough of the talking. Let's go ahead and get into the analysis. It's cold. It's as cold as it is horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> We're certainly painting the air with our breath right now. And you're going to paint those hallways with your... Feces. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to rub my doo-doo all over it. Well, let's get in there and get dirty, huh? I remember this place. Okay, so for those of you who have not watched this duo, uh, they, they've been doing this for a minute. They didn't just have it on Watcher here, they had it on BuzzFeed as well. BuzzFeed uh, Supernatural, I believe is what it was called. And so they used to be able to do episodes back then, so we might even be able to do some other episodes from those earlier times as well, if you're interested. During this time, Shane is a skeptic. And Ryan is a believer in the supernatural. So those are those are those are the dynamics here. Ryan used to have much more of a proclivity to be very afraid and nervous and on edge while going through these. Perhaps we'll see some of that still, even though this is years into their career of doing this. Let's just keep watching. This place. Yeah, I mean, I've been in very few morgues in my lifetime. So yeah, this place rings a bell. So obviously Deanna sent us an EVP of a lady humming in here. Yeah. See if we could get that to happen again. That Can't be hard, hard to get a hum. Ghost guy, I mean, come on, just a hum? You don't even have to move your lips around. Just give it a <laughs> <laughs> If you could hum a tune, can you hum Yankee Doodle Dandy for us, please? I mean, that's probably the one song they knew back then. <laughs> Take it away. All right, gonna go ahead and pause here. So at the beginning here, while doing the introduction and the talking about the just humming of the song and whatnot, you could see that Ryan's a little bit more tense, a little bit more stilted. Shane is quite relaxed. This is very common in their dynamic and that does fit also with their perceptions of the supernatural. Now, as we're going through here and they have this humming section and they receive some humming back, both of them are showing actual expressions of shock or surprise on their face. You can see that through the relaxation of their eyes here, and then also the relaxation of their jaw as well. Very common, raising of the eyebrows, widening of the eyes, relaxation of the muscles, all indicators of actual surprise, possible fear, not necessarily fear on Shane's part from what I'm seeing here as he's emoting more so outside of that. Ryan is more pushed into that realm of fear as well. So they're both surprised. One of them's a little bit fearful. Let's see how it goes. Are you hearing that? Yeah, a little bit. Are you hearing that? The hair on the back of my fucking neck is standing up. I mean, it could have well been a, a car outside somewhere, but it did sound like a sort of a low tone somewhere in the building. <laughs> I certainly heard something there. I mean, do I think it's a ghost? No. Do you? Yes. Fully, yeah, I'd say if I were someone who believed in ghosts, I'd be a little unnerved right now. I'd probably get the little shaky knees. I down my my back is tingling. Could could you whoever was humming, could you hum again, please? We're gonna go ahead and pause that here. So something that I do find interesting from Shane during this time. Ryan's obviously having a a, a time. You could tell he the table is his best friend right now. Shane, on the other hand, what I'm finding interesting is that he's packing this space with a lot of extra verbiage, and a lot of people will start to chat a little bit more when they get nervous, especially people who are used to being on screen or on camera and they have to fill silences with noise, they'll start to chat. So I'm, I'm noticing that Shane's starting to chat a little bit extra in this area and I'm wondering if that is a level of nerves. Perhaps, perhaps this little indicator, this little hum is something that he's really being affected by on more levels than he's wanting to admit. And so now he's starting to chat it up just a, a, a little bit here, but let's keep watching. Oh, 
Okay, well, I'm really glad we didn't hear anything on that one. Tell you what, why don't we move to the we'll spirit? To the, there was another. What, really? Yeah. Tell you what. I swear to God, in between you talking there. I didn't hear it. Thank God, I didn't hear it. <sighs> fucking first room. Fucking first room in this horrible fucking building. Why are you still here? Ugh. She don't sound happy. Laura, do you have any words of wisdom for the children of the future? Can you tell me the name of the room we're in? Say morgue. That actually kind of sounded like the morgue, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, well we're gonna go- Again, I'm gonna pause here again, so I'm noticing genuine reactions of surprise or startled or shocked, anything in that area coming from both parties. It's very much more overt from Ryan, again, as he's a little bit more emotive in this area. So we're seeing uh, the, the the same pattern that we saw earlier with the relaxation, the dropping of the jaw, the widening of the eyes, the raising of the eyebrows, very fully displayed on Ryan. While Shane, on the other hand, is still showing some of these micro expressions of shock or surprise, but not to the full overt nature that Ryan is, and that still fits in with their lines and their roles on this show in and of itself. So far, what I'm noticing is that this doesn't seem to be something that's set up or, or curated by somebody else, and they're just trying to throw evidence in for the sake of it, at least judging by their genuine reactions, how their onset are, the emotional profile that they show with them as they fall into the emotion itself and then fall back out of it. All of it does seem to be quite authentic and synchronized from what I can tell so far. Let's keep watching. Well, we're gonna go in a... So if there's anything, what? So we're gonna go in a second here. Sound angry. Yeah, I don't know why you're so upset. Did we do something to upset you? I mean, I guess. Jesus. Ooh, okay. Oh, shut it off. What, what? What did he say? <laughs> I don't know. Well, that was incredibly unsettling. I'm happy. I mean, I like it more than the spirit box, but I gotta say, they got a scary energy to them with this machine. I don't like this room. I'm gonna say it. The morgue? Yeah, Shane, I don't like the morgue. What's your issue with it? You know what the morgue? weird thing about it was? Is I felt like bad in yeah, the morgue. Yeah, bad vibes. Yeah. Obviously, other than the... So I do find that interesting. Okay, so yeah, obviously, morgue. Uh, I've been into a morgue very rarely, and they do have an interesting feel. For those of you who work in a morgue, I, uh, kudos to you. Made me feel unsettled, uh, and I know that it's a very important work. So thank you for those of you who do work there. Now... Shane is even admitting now that he is actually feeling on a level unnerved and he's trying to write it off as like, well, the gear itself kind of makes this seem kind of more un unnerving and whatnot, but he is emoting and admitting to this feeling of fear or unsettled being. So, so far, again, this is all pointing me towards authenticity of what their experience is and what their emotional response to that experience is. Let's keep watching. Other than the man that was found in the shaft, they also found a dog. Yeah. We got a little trigger object here. Come get it. It's Come on, right dog. Here. We got a bone for you. It's right there. Dog love a bone. Dog love a bone. You better get it, dog, otherwise I'm gonna get after it. Does a dog understand what you're saying? I don't fucking know what I'm doing. My name's Ryan, can you say my name back to me? Can you tell me your name? Can you tell us your dog's name? Can you tell us what happened to you? How about this? Oh, Jesus. Whoa, what's going on? Is that you by the pod? Step away from it if it's you. Oh, shit. Okay, if that was you again, could you please step back towards the uh, bone, please? Oh, fuck! Oh, shit! Uh, step away now? Can you step away now, please? Step away from the boat! Okay, that's, you understand yes and no then. Can you make that turn on for yes? Okay, so what I'm hearing here during this part is a fair bit of agitation coming into the pitch of Ryan specifically as he's speaking the most here. You can hear that tension coming in, a little bit more force behind it, and also the pitch itself is raising just ever so slightly. Agitation, obvious, clear and through. And then along with that, we're also seeing Shane regularly check in with people visually. So he glances over at the cameraman, he glances up at Ryan, he's glancing around, and these glances can be glances of reassurance and checking in to see how other people are doing 
in the room. This is also something that's done commonly in areas of uncertainty for people as well. So we're seeing both Shane and Ryan be very unsettled by this experience, and they're both displaying it in very different ways. Ryan's, again, more obvious and overt, and Shane's in these more subtle, different ways. Let's keep watching. Did you get pushed down the shaft? Hey, 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 you just walk up to that thing and touch the bone. Guy. All right, it's me. I'm talking to the spirits now. And you can use my little buddy over there as a antenna. What's your name? Incredible. Bit cocky. What are you doing? Scare me. Scare you? You're a ghost, you should be scaring me. Typically how it works. Do it. Okay, okay, uh... Booga booga booga! You know, I don't know what to fucking... I'm just here to get a picture of you on my iPhone. What was the name of your dog? What was the name of your dog? Steve. Do your dog's name was Steve? Okay. What did you think as you were falling down the elevator shaft? Ja Rule? <laughs> Odd thing to think about in your final moments, especially when you preceded him by a handful of decades. Question. Okay. Uh, what is that? Uh, this is a, an Osmo. It's a sort of like a gimbal. Box. Yeah, sorry, my Osmo is be- What the fuck are you doing, Osmo? Don't embarrass me like this, goddammit. Not in front of the ghosts. Any last words? This is part, the entire part just strikes me as fascinating. Okay, so for those of you who don't know and haven't watched, first, go watch the actual videos that Shane and Ryan do. They're fantastic, they're very engaging, and they explain all of this in much more detail and depth. So please go, go check out their videos. Now, what we're doing here is that Ryan has headphones on that are sound insulating that he can't hear Shane talking and he's hooked up to a spirit box so he can hear certain things that come through and he'll say those words as he hears them in regards to Shane saying whatever. So Shane is just saying things into what is silence for everybody else and Ryan is saying things into what is silence for him. And the fact that they are lining up with the amount of accuracy that they are is just in and of itself fascinating. It is interesting. I'm also not gathering that this is something that's a bit. It's also oddly timed, so it's not something that feels like it was rehearsed to where, okay, wait for a beat and then respond. It feels oddly timed in there, so it's less likely to be planned out. So during this time, again, it just seems to be something that is pushing us towards believing the experience that Shane and Ryan are having at this location, down to the words and the uh, the, the response is being used. Along with that, another common thing in these situations is for electronic devices to start having malfunctions. And I find it interesting that electronic malfunctions begin to happen when talking about the box that Shane is possibly holding here. Maybe it's the phone, something along those lines, or this could all just be happenstance and pure coincidence. It, it would be a lot of coincidences to happen all at once in one location, but there is still that possibility. All of these are just piling up to get, to get a good understanding as to what Shane and Ryan are experiencing and whether or not they're genuinely emoting to it. Let's keep watching. Uh, that you'd like to impart to us as someone who spent their final moments screaming as they fell down a dirty old elevator shaft. Not the way anyone would like to go. Christ. I guess he had it worse. You're right. He did get pushed off. Oh! Okay! So that happened to you then? That could have been Kristoff. I'm not sure if that was pushed off or Kristoff. Hit- what, Hitler? Oh, what, oh. No, no, yeah, <laughs> let's stop it there. Uh, I don't think Hitler has anything to do with this. Wait, so did anything actually make sense? Sure, some of it, yeah. That's kind of cool. I don't know what job- <laughs> Pretty, pretty, uh, high pitch there coming from Shane. That dismissal in there as well. Yeah, a fair bit of it did line up quite nicely with, unless it was edited to do so, which is a distinct possibility, again, from the emotional responses that I was seeing from each party, more so from Shane on that level, is it wasn't necessarily edited to appear that way, but it is still something that I want to be able to make note of, is that there's still the possibility that all of this is just coincidence, so let's keep watching. I don't know what Jaw Rule has to do with this. We yeah, that was weird. Some it was pretty clear, one. too. It was a pretty clear Jaw Rule. On our way to the next room, this happened. What was that noise? Did one of you kick that? No. That wasn't one of you? No. Do we, do we know where it came from? Down here. It sounded like down there. Okay. I you guys no. I don't know what that could have been. I mean, it sounded like something potentially fell on this metal grate. 
or it could have been like a wire or something. I'm also that seeing is. up here, you know, I'm not just trying to debunk this. I'm just. I mean, no, you should try and debunk it. I'm just Serve saying there's a lot yeah. of, uh, you know, we were walking on these stairs and there is a lot of loose wall here. I'll so. tell you what, you stand right here. Okay. Tell yeah. me if anything moves under. Yeah, I mean, there's some little bits coming off, but nothing that would have made that sort of noise. Oh my God, even being up here alone. You don't like it, huh? I don't like it. Love that. Timmy? Timmy? Tiff, I just wanted to state I appreciate that they are still approaching it with this mindset of let's try to disprove it before we just try to find all of the evidence that proves it for ourselves. So I do appreciate that in there. There wasn't too much non-verbally centered around that to be able to make note of, but did want to make note of that. Let's keep watching. Me? Timmy? Your favorite, I wanted to say brothers, but that felt weird. I feel like Timmy's brother. Yeah, Timmy, your favorite older brothers are back to play catch again. People really loved seeing you on the internet, Timmy. And you... oh, there's a blue ball. That's a big one. Timmy's doing some kickball. You know what? You want to use that one instead? No, we'll use both of them. Okay. Because I'm curious if, he, if he's like, no, I only play with the blue ball. I mean, at a certain point, you're just throwing, you know. It's... Oh! What? What the freak? <laughs> Oh shit, the tarp, the tarp. Oh. <laughs> the tarp slammed against that frame and scared the fuck out of me. Timmy? Tim? Again, you can hear that increased pitch <laughs> as the explanation. Ex ex uh, uh, exclamation, not explanation. Oh my god. As the exclamation is made, the increase in pitch and tone and harshness and everything that we've talked about earlier enters in there again. Again, it's just a common indicator of agitation and it lines up with the authentic jump scares as it does with vocal displaced from other areas where there's not a jump scare involved. So just making some parallels and connections here. Very fun. Uh, let's keep watching. Timmy. Okay, Timmy, I'm gonna toss this nice blue kickball that I know you love. It's your favorite color. I'm going full FIFA on this fucking ball here. Yeah, dude. Send it back. I did, that was a, not a great, really poor kick. Not a great kick. All right, now that's what I'm talking about. All right, Timmy. I'd love for you to send that back. I'm gonna go ahead and pause it here. If the ball comes back, that would be that would be something else. That'd be some pretty hard. That's not a coincidence. That's that's pretty dif difficult to ignore. I'm gonna bet that it probably doesn't come back. But let's see. Should we go find the ball? Yeah, I think we ought to. Why don't you go by yourself? Huh? Timmy? You heard that, right? I did. Uh, who made that noise? Was that you, Timmy? Where'd the ball go, Timmy? Where did that ball go? Timmy? Tim? Here's the white ball. They're right next to each and other. Here's the blue ball. Blue now, ball? If anything, now I'm really Wait, impressed that we got the ball to land. Yeah, really nice. It looks like they're little prizes for us. What was that noise, though? Here we go, Timmy. Sounds like you snagged something out there. I'm sorry if I threw that forcefully at you. And for anybody who may be in the top. Excuse? What? Just so we're clear, I'm gonna go find this ball, and I'm not talking to anybody that's on this floor. I did not throw that at you in anger. Where'd that ball go? There it is. What was that noise? Oh my god, I fucking hate this. Dude, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this. <laughs> well, unfortunately, you're gonna have to, because this is your fucking job. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I think. All right, so what I'm noticing non verbally as they're going on here, Ryan is becoming more and more timid with his just overall presence. He's starting to tread more lightly. He's not speaking as loudly. He's becoming smaller in the frame. So that's making sense as he's becoming more and more uncomfortable with the situation. Something else that just dawned on me while watching this is there's the possibility that some of these noises that they're hearing would again be the tarps moving in some of those rooms that scared them earlier. So some of these weird rustling and noises and whatnot just very well could be that. So even though it is lining up somewhat with their activities, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's actually ghost activity. That's not something that I believe they bring up in here. So that is something that just popped into my mind. Let me know if you agree with that or if there's something else that I'm missing here, but let's keep watching. I, think, uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. Yeah. Bobby, there's a candy bar right there for you. Okay, Shane, I'm going to take some pictures. Actually, could you take some pictures? Sure. Let's try and see if 
<laughs> Don't get too close to it. It's gonna freak out. Uh, go to where uh, Mark is. This is the old kitchenette. Bobby, are you here? Uh. Okay. That was a little freaky. Where's that? Where's the kitchen? This is the kitchen here. This is the kitchen? Well, look. Whoa. I mean, I wasn't near that, right? No. Bobby, if that's you, can you get closer to the candy? Both of them, whenever the, the light starts going off and the sound starts going off, both of them freeze, become very tense. This is a common, common reaction in stressful situations. Obviously, that can be seen anywhere. The fight or flight sort of reaction is common fight, flight, freeze, spawn. Those ones come out. Obviously, the one that is being displayed here is going to be the freeze. And that will be most commonly seen in these sorts of instances where people are trying to explore something or go into something that is scary to them. Anytime that there's something that feels scary to them, the reaction is likely going to be to freeze because they can't run and they're not really able to fight or fawn. So freezing will become a much more common reaction. So we're seeing that come out from them both. Let's let's just keep watching. Bar. If you want that candy bar, go ahead and take a bite out of it or just get close to it. Oh. Let me grab my SLS. Bobby, I'm gonna ask you again. Can you get close to that candy bar again? Or anybody up here. Timmy, if you want to come up here, you could also take a bite of that candy bar. Just get near it. Candy for everybody. Candy for Bobby, candy for Timmy. Oh shit. You guys could lady in the tramp this can shit. You, can you make it go all the way up to the, to the per? You get even closer? Can you get even closer? No? Like automatic. All right, so during that time, something else that I just find interesting about their behaviors during that. Both of them are staying fairly stationary where they are trying to make sure that they don't move around a lot to make the device become active. Now, let me know for those of you who are more versed in these devices and mechanisms that they're using, whether or not that, that sort of display of lights and proximity can be triggered by something else. Now, something that I do want to be able to say in order to add authenticity to what they are displaying here is that Ryan also tries to go in and grab a secondary piece of equipment to be able to use to verify what they're seeing with the one. So that is an indicator of authenticity to want to be able to test a certain perspective from multiple different points of view is important to do. So that's something that adds to authenticity from them. So we're seeing the nonverbal displays, obviously, but then we're also seeing these practices that they're using as well that push towards authenticity rather than this all being a type of show. So let's just keep watching. Amber. S snooker collector. My name is Ryan. Can you say my name back to me if you want to communicate? Guys, crack. Crack. There's rumors out there that you may have not actually done this to yourself. Is that true? Yes! Oh my god. Okay, so it's not true. Ooh, I just got chills up my spot. Uh, what happened then? Dudley! What happened? They say you took your own life right here, but there was rumors that you might have been involved in an unwanted pregnancy and that perhaps this isn't exactly what you wanted to happen. Beefcake! What? Maxine! What? actually happened what to you What are right your here. thoughts? What are my thoughts? I'm trying to figure out what happened to you right here. Annie! Is that your name? Is Annie your name? Is there anybody else up here that isn't one of the two nurses that people often ask about? Little boy! Little boy. Which little boy is up here? Puddle! There was a little boy caught in room 504. Somebody sent us a photo of him. Human! Human. Can you tell me why you're still here? You! Huh, me. This is your chance. Really? Human! Yes, really. Yes. What happened to you? Come on, I have to leave. Deborah! Deborah. Shane! Shane? Boys! Puddle! Okay, you have 10 seconds to say something that explains Growth. why you are still here. Laser! All right, we're gonna leave. M Mo! Johnny! Millions of dollars! 
Are you, did you get anything? We did get some kind of cool stuff. We okay. got also a lot of that. All right, so in that area, you can hear how this obviously has a lot of room for error. There can be just a lot of nonsense being said in regards to what is being asked by the other person. So that would be an area that you could see that randomness, which then paints a little bit of perspective for the earlier time where a lot of it did seem to line up substantially more. Not verbally speaking, there wasn't too much to be able to go off of. There wasn't anything that they were trying to display or show or anything like that that would be informational. But that does help add some perspective as to like what we're seeing and what we're able to gather and what they're experiencing and the contrast between the two. Let's keep watching this. Kind of cool stuff. We okay. got also a lot of that nonsense, but we did get some cool stuff. I, I much prefer this method. You look like an insane person. <laughs> it was really nice. I love this. Someone down here? We just put two like glowing eyes down there in post production. Uh, no, that's not what we do. <laughs> that was and a test. test. That was a test. When you well, passed. this is what you think Anna is doing. Test. We're coming down if there's anything down here. So strap up. Here we come. Well, my name is Ryan. I'm Shane. Can, can you say my name back? Some pair of gloves. Did someone just get whacked here? What? What was that? Can you say your name? Can one of you use this device to communicate with me? If there's somebody here with us right now, friendly or not, show us a sign you're here. Kill, kill us. Kill both of us. I would prefer that one not. Kill us. No, maybe not that Please. <laughs> kill us. Kill us. S snap our necks. Yeah, Both I don't of us in tandem just dropping like a sack of rocks. I do not want a neck snap on camera. Should we walk back up? What? Well, look who decided to show up. Maybe... Boba Fett? I'm sorry, we didn't catch any of that. You're gonna have to speak a lot clearer. I'm sorry, what was that? You know what, I'm gonna change it into a word. Do that, do that. Okay. Oh, fuck! What? <laughs> it just said leave. It just turned it on and it just said leave. Disease. Now that's true. Is that how you died? Simple yes or no here. Can you tell us your name, ma'am? Oh, we just haven't said on the lady's voice, right? That's right, I said. What'd you say? Complete. Complete? What does that mean? I'm gonna turn this off in about 10 seconds if you don't start answering my questions here intelligently. Good job. <laughs> job. King? No, now don't try and stroke the ego here. We do know we're the kings of ghost hunting. Jog, King, jog! Okay. And that's, that's our highlights there. So uh, throughout that, there were definitely areas that I was able to notice that their, their nonverbal communication was synchronized. It was authentic. It seemed to be really lining up perfectly with what they were experiencing in the, the location that they're in. So with that, this would be, in my books, considered uh, some more points towards the supernatural side of things rather than it just being random happenstance. A lot of it... There were there were a number of coincidences that did seem to line up rather closely in a rather short amount of time. So with that, that's how I'm feeling on this. Now, that's not necessarily the case with every place that they go or all of their experiences that they have. So this one felt a little bit different and it would have been pretty eerie to be there personally myself. Let me know in the comments below what you think about what you just saw, though. Is this something that you feel would be enough evidence to say that there is something supernatural? Or would you feel like this is just all something that is happenstance, random coincidences that just happen to be caught on film? Let me know in the comments below. From their nonverbal communication, they at least felt like they were experiencing something that was genuine, that was actually eerie and unsettling, and that displayed throughout both nonverbal communication and their vocal tendencies as well. Also, they had fun as they usually do and had their banter back and forth, so it made a good video. Again, go and check out their videos if you would like to be able to see the full thing. 
My video only kind of gives some context to the non-verbals. Theirs is a whole different ball game and it has a lot more to it. Very entertaining. Like I said, go check them out. Let me know if there are any other requests for this in the comments below, specific episodes, specific scenes. Everything is very helpful to me. You can reach out on the socials as well if you don't comment in the comment section or you could do it on both. Can go across everywhere and you know, comment everywhere if you really want to. That's very, that's very up to you. But if you want to be able to see more of these videos, go ahead and hit subscribe, hit the like button to support this video. Go ahead and hit the bell thingy to know when I upload sooner. And also again, the memberships are available for everybody who is interested. You get the little badges and the emojis and things like that, plus a little bit of extra engagement from me as well. So thank you in advance for that. But, but without further ado, that's all that I've got for today. My name is Logan and you have been oh so awesome as you always are. And I will see you in the next video. Cheers guys.